Good morning, good morning, church. How's everybody doing this beautiful 4th of July? Independence Day, amen? Why don't you give this nation a nice big hand? Amen? Hallelujah. No, you can stay up here. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're kidding me. That's awesome. How many of you are going to go see fireworks tonight? Amen. Yes. How many of you already saw some already? Yes. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's open up with a word of prayer. Come on up. My helper's over here. Come on up. Oh, we need the mic. Could you get to grab the mic over there for me, please? Hallelujah. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Bless the Lord. And then we're going to have our, our young people. Here, do our declaration, amen? amen? You guys look fabulous. Well, I'm not young because I'm already You're six. not young. Oh, my gosh, you're six. Do <laughs> you know that is so old? That's almost older than me. But let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you now in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Father, we just welcome you. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day, Father, this wonderful day, for this is the day that you have made, Father. Father, this is even the day of independence that you have given, Father, this nation. And so, Father, we thank you for it. We are in great thanksgiving to you, Father, for what you have done for us, the freedom that we have lived in, and, Father, the freedom that we will continue to live in, Father, by your grace. And so, Father, we just welcome you, Lord God, this morning, Father, to honor you, to bless you. Father, to be a love unto you, Lord God, may we make you smile this morning. Amen. Father, we love you. We bless your holy name. And we all said, amen. amen and amen and amen. All right, let's go ahead. You ready, Evan? Give this guy a big hand. So I'm just declaring like preacher mode over Evan. What do you think? Amen? Yeah? There you go, buddy. the voices. Amen. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will send him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand, church. Yes, 
to fill the temple. Let there be a sound that goes forth declaring the praises of our God this morning. Come on, we're not holding back our praise. Yeah.
This song is an absolutely powerful song, but it's not even, listen to me, you got to hear this because I believe that God is, is releasing this, these words in this region for the particular reason of focusing on God bringing forth revival. We are literally hearing the rumbles of revival. I know the worship team has a couple of more songs, but this is what I'd like to do because I had expressed to them this morning that when they're singing this song, and you can see their excitement about it, it's not the excitement of the song, it's the excitement of the words. Revival is literally in the air. So I'm just going to ask that we can just come together. I know that this is a busy song and it really, but we're going to do this one more time. Can we do this? And I want us to just join at the altar. And I want us to begin to sing this song prophetically into the atmosphere because it is something that is absolutely happening. And if you can't get it, 
right now at this time like you're not seeing it, then step into it by faith and begin to declare it over yourself. Begin to speak to the dry bones over yourself. Begin to speak to the dry bones in the region. Begin to speak to the dry bones over America. What a day to begin to sing this kind of song, to begin to declare this, these kinds of words over our nation, over our nation. So let these words be a prophetic declaration from your whole being into this nation and into this region because God is releasing revival here in Michigan. I declare that, I believe that with all my heart, amen.
your family city. Declare over this region. Declare the prophecies that have been spoken. Remind God of those prophecies. Stand on that truth this morning. Declare it. Just life. Just say life. Just say life. We speak 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 holiness. literally the rumblings of revival that are happening in this nation throughout the world there are rumblings of revival that are happening in the state of Michigan we're not the only church that is feeling the rumblings of revival but you have to you have to be able to see it you have to be able to feel it you have to ju just know that that God has already declared that it's coming already declared it glory to God glory to God hallelujah hmm my daughter was we were talking and we were talking about the scripture about how David was undignified. We were talking about that this morning. Yeah. Undignified. Now listen to me, church. Glory to God. Make up in, make up your mind already that nothing is going to hold you back from giving him all the glory. You know, it used to take me so much just to lift my hands in the beginning. Like I thought that was, that was the, uh, that was it. I've arrived in worship. I lifted my hands to the Lord. And then I began to see, I began to speak in tongues like all these other crazy people. Speaking in kingdom language. And there was a part of me that said, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And then, do you know how much it actually took me to begin to just not even jump in church, just do this. Even to begin to tap your foot now listen to me, not because the music was good, 
but because the presence was real. Because the presence is real. And so I'm only sharing this to let you know that, that when you are so thankful for your salvation, and that how that God is going to manifest himself for the salvation of others, how that God is going to manifest in, in bringing people out of bondages and in, in, in releasing his presence. You know, David said one thing. He said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You know what that means? It means don't ever let the presence depart. Don't ever let the presence of God depart from who I am. So there may be many of you that don't feel a drop of what I'm saying, and that's okay. But what I'm asking you is that by faith is that you step into it because the presence of God is the reality. The presence of God is the reality. And as you begin to release yourself into that by faith, what you're going to experience is literally going beyond your flesh and to experience everything that the Father has for you. And this is really just the beginning for what God is releasing in this new era. I just want you to continue in the, the other songs that you have today, or whatever you have, whatever you want to do. But church, to be able to, to step into by faith, if you need to just stomp your foot a little bit to kind of start up the engine a little bit, okay, if you need to stomp your foot a little bit, if you need to turn around a little bit, just allow yourself to just, no one's going to see you, I promise. No one's going to see you. When you stop paying attention to everything else and to everyone else and only pay attention to one, then that's where that communion is. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense. God is so good. You're going to step into this new dimension with the people of God. Amen? Worship team, it's all yours. Everything. 
continue just to declare who he is. Who his he is. nature in this house. You know what? The Lord is the way maker. God makes a way where there seems to be no way. When our mind begins to go in a direction that is negative to what God's word says, yeah. he's the same today, yeah. yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. See, the thing that's got to change is us. We're the ones that have to change. He's already set the course. He's already made us to walk in the pace that he wants us to walk in. So what do we do? We begin to declare what the word says. You see, life and death is in the power of your tongue. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. The word of the Lord is established forever. It changes not. When God said it, it happened. When God said have faith, he wants us to have faith. To not only have faith, but to believe. If we don't believe, we say we have faith, but we don't believe. We don't have what we're supposed to have. So what are we going to do? We're going to declare he's Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He's everything I need. See, a lot of people think that they've got everything they need because they've got a six-figure digit job. But you know what? God is greater than the six-digit job. Amen? When the world fails and the world fades away, he's still going to be there. You know what I'm saying? So this morning, you want a healing? This morning, if you want your finances to change, this morning, if you want your family to come back into serving God, today, if you want to see your nation have an outpouring of the Spirit of God, begin to declare the word of the Lord. Amen? Because he's the way maker. Yes. 
God looks for his children to walk by faith. When he says something, he means it. When he said, I've already given you everything you have need of pertaining to life and godliness, he meant it. Sometimes we try to look for God in the natural, and the natural can't see it because of the clouds that surround us, because of the storms that are raging, because of the winds that are blowing. Sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes we can't feel it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. again. Sing it to the Lord. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who. Sing it again. Sing it again. To declare it. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, even when I don't see it, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in. Come on, sing it, church. Sing it to the Lord. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is. Oh, 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 let me tell you what the Lord just showed me. And it's this. There's some people in this place today that's going to begin to experience this week something that you've been asking for. Because the Lord has brought you before his altar this morning to position you to a place of receiving. A place of receiving. You see, when we've got our back turned in a certain direction, where our eyes are turned in a certain direction, our back is toward God. But when we turn our back on things that we see in the natural we focus upon the one who said, I'll give it to those who will believe it. Something's about to going to happen this week. There's some things about to take place. This week, I was about my business, working, and there was a name that kept coming to me. And I said, Lord, is something wrong? Is there something wrong with this person? And I didn't hear an answer, but he kept putting that person before me. And you're here this morning. You're in this place this morning. And so I'm going to speak to you prophetically. And your name is Cindy. 
And the word of the Lord declares to you that from this day forward, because you've been in, you've come into the presence of the Lord and you've set yourself to receive from the Lord, God said, there is coming an outpouring in your personal life. A greater place than you've ever experienced before. God said, you're going to hear my voice very clearly this week. You're going to hear some answers to some prayers that you've been praying and the enemy's been saying, but that ain't going to happen. And the Lord says, I'm going to show you who I am and what I promised you, and it will come to pass. The Lord says, I'm drawing you closer to me. You're going to begin to see things clearly. You're going to begin to hear things much more clearer. You're going to begin to have faith like you never had faith before. You're going to begin to feel the presence of the Lord like you've never felt the presence before. Because, you see, we never get to one point and then it stops. God's continually drawing us to come higher and higher and further and further. And God said, the presence that you used to know is not going to be the same after today. You're going to know me in a greater way, says the Lord. Because I purposed your life. Because I ordained your life. And God said, you've waited. You said, God, I do believe, but I can't see it. But the Lord said, you're going to see it. <laughs> you're going to see it. When the children of Israel were standing at the gate, standing at the, at the edge of the, of the, not the gate, but the, at the edge of the shore, and the, in the, in the, in the, the, what do you call them? The Israelites, the Egyptians, I mean, excuse me, the Egyptians were coming after him. Pharaoh and his army was coming after him, and all they could see was, was the water before them and how are we going to get across it. And, the, and the, the enemy coming up behind him to capture him and take him back to a land that God delivered him from. The Lord says, I'm going to deliver you from an old land. <laughs> and you're going to walk across down dry land. And on the other side is going to be abundance, abundance, abundance. Not so much of the natural, but of him. Because when you get more of him, you get a lot of the natural, too, because God pours it out. You believe that? Praise the Lord. Even when I can't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You got to believe that. Heard a word from the Lord. Unconventional revival. Unconventional not based on or conforming to what is generally done or believed. Now I want you to look at me because I'm going to read that again. Those of you that are watching online, I want you to hear this. God is bringing forth an unconventional revival. It's not based on or conforming to what you have generally known, to what you have generally have experienced God is literally I kept hearing this in my spirit quit putting him in a box quit looking at him the way that you've always looked at him quit praying the way that you've always prayed quit praising the way that you've always praised what God is going to bring forth on the earth is going to be unconventional it is going to be totally different than what you have thought of, what you thought revival should look like, what you thought it should feel like. What I began to see is barriers. Barriers that people would put in church and say, church is supposed to happen like this. Barriers that say, people say, well, I'm going to go to church and I'm only going to do this. 
The barriers being that I've experienced God and, and, and I've, this is where I have experienced Him. This is all I'm going to do. This is as much as I'm going to move. This is as much as I'm going to sing. This is as much as I'm going to give. This is as much as I'm going to whatever. And God says, enough. This will be completely unconventional. Don't try to make it up in your head. Don't try to make it look like it should be something that you think it should look like because it's not going to be that. As soon as you begin to do that, you are creating barriers and restraining the presence of God to move upon your life. Don't do it. Anything that you thought that you have known about revival in the past. Glory to God, past revivals pointed to the desire for God to bring awakening. But don't you dare try to put him in that same box. Because it's going to look different. It's going to feel different. You will have services in here and worship sets that are going to totally just be not what you have planned for the week or two weeks. They're going to be totally just, just on the whim. What God is just continuing to bring up. Get used to the altar. Get used to the altar. Don't get used to sitting in your seats and sitting through a whole service because those days are gone. Get used to the altar of God. Get used to laying prostrate before the Father. Get used to dancing before the Father. Not based on or conforming to what you generally have done or what you have experienced or what you have believed. That's one of your restraints. That's one of your restraints. Your denomination has restrained you. Your past denominational mindsets has restrained you. And God wants to re release you. He wants to move he wants to take you beyond your humanity. He even wants to take you beyond your will. Now remember the other night when I, when, when I expressed to you when someone's voice changes, when they're giving prophetically what they're doing or what they're saying, were you here Wednesday night? Did you hear that? Pay attention. Pay attention. Because God is bringing some things forth. God is bringing some things forth, and there are some, some, some great, great, great releases that God is bringing. As a pastor... We're supposed to have, listen to me, I'm not saying that God does away with all of his rules and, and, and how God sets things in order. That's not what I'm talking about. But as a minister, you, you, we have typically a, we go through, we do, you know, the four songs. And of course, that doesn't matter here, but you have your two songs. Or maybe you have your no music and you have your two songs or you have your whatever and literally we have boxed up the presence of God. We have limited what God wants to do. God wants to take you beyond your humanity. He wants to take you beyond your humanity. And literally as I'm saying this, not only is it speaking into this house, but it's speaking to whoever's listening out there. Because God's going to do this. And there will be people that will not experience it. God say, remove my limitations. If you would just picture yourself for just a moment, close your eyes. And I want you to see like those barriers, those, those not, not just cones, because you can go in between cones, but I want you to see those concrete barriers that are out in the, 
in the, uh, the highways that they put to divide the, the lanes. And I want you to see those concrete barriers, and I want you to go, uh, I want you to go and push those over and say, God, I'm, I'm releasing these boundaries. I'm releasing these barriers. Every mindset, every step, I'm just releasing these boundaries. I'm releasing, God, every limited place in Jesus' name right now, right now. If you are dry in this house, if your relationship is dry with the Father, or maybe you've never encountered the Father, I want you right up here, right up front, because I just want to speak life. We're speaking life this morning. If that's you, then be so bold to stand forward. Go forward and, and ask God to just begin to do this thing on the inside of you. I'm not going to be bashful about this. But whatever limitations there are, then allow God to take you and press you beyond. Because he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Thank you for that boldness. Thank you for that boldness. Just come on up. Just come on up to the front. So scoot over a little bit. Come on up to the front. Right here. Yes. Just come on over here. Father, we thank you for your boldness in your people. We thank you for boldness in your people. Pastor Becky, I'm going to ask you to come down here. Glory to God. And if there are other ones, I want you just right up front. Just right up front. Unconventional revival. Unconventional revival. Unconventional revival. Father, I thank you for the boldness of these. Come on, church, if this ain't for you, then go ahead and lift your hands this way so that they can be blessed. Honey, come on over here. Michelle, come on over here. I want you to... Now, I know this, is, this might seem odd, but I want you to put your hand on their bellies. Declare awakening, life, in Jesus' mighty name. Life, 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 life. Hallelujah. Dominique, come on over here and just right here, please. Life, life, life. God, we declare life. God, in Jesus' name, every boundary, God, every boundary, every limitation, broken, life, alive, fresh, awakening, fresh, awakening, alive, oh God, alive, oh God, alive, oh God, fresh awakening, fresh awakening, oh God. Fresh awakening. Hallelujah. Fresh awakening. Put your hand on her belly. But I still live, I see God. Fresh awakening. Fresh awakening. Fresh awakening. Alive. Alive, God. Relationship alive. Alive and well. God, in Jesus' mighty name, alive, O oh God. Alive, O oh God. Yes, God. Yes. 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 Alive, O oh God. God, take them beyond. Take them beyond. No limitations, God. 
no limitations. God, we declare in Jesus' name to break every limitation, God, that nothing would restrain her, nothing would hold her back from receiving everything that you are, all that you are doing, in Jesus' name. Right here. Right here. Prendere la base, prendere la base. No limitations. No limitations. No limitations. No limitations. No limitations. I need another usher over here. I want him praying for him. No limitations. Put your hand on his belly. No limitations. Father, we declare life over him, God. Great awakening that would happen down deep on the inside. Great awakening, God. Bring it forth. Father, we declare it. Great awakening. Great awakening, oh God. Great awakening unto your calling, unto your purpose, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, the enemy has tried to blind you, but God has great awakenings for you. God has great awakenings for you. Great awakenings for you, Pastor Becky. Strength of great awakenings. Alive. Alive. Father, we thank you. Father, there is such a wealth on the inside of her God. And Father, we thank you for the great awakening, Father. For she desires to partake. She desires to be in the front part of your great awakening. And so, Father, give it to her. Give it to her, God. Let her see you in a whole new dimension. Let her hear you in a whole new dimension. Let her feel you in a whole new dimension, God. Bring forth, God, your plan. No, you're not too old. No, you're not done. Father, we thank you for your anointing upon her life. And Father, your great calling. No, you haven't missed it. Father, we thank you. And yes, you're still of great use unto the kingdom. You're still of great use unto the kingdom. You're still of great use to the kingdom. Father, every limitation, every limitation, every thought, every limiting thought, Father, we crumble right now in Jesus' name. We crumble it right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, take her beyond even her own thoughts. Take her beyond her humanity. I've heard in my heart that the enemy has tried to distract you. That he's even put some things before your eyes. And the Lord says, give them to me. Give them to me. Father, we thank you for that. Because, Father, there is divine calling upon his life. Father, bring forth divine calling. Father, great awakening. Great awakening. Divine calling. Great awakening. For the last three days, the Lord has been showing me that he's making something. And he's been giving me glimpses of it. And each time he shows me, it is more beautiful than the first time. And he's saying that there are some people who believe that Satan has already sifted them as wheat. But he's saying, behold, I'm doing a new thing. I'm putting all the pieces together in ways that you could never imagine. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And he's saying, I am the resurrection. What you thought was yes, dead, God. I am raising it up. Behold, yes, all things are new. Mm. Mm. 
Unconventional. Don't let go of that word. Unconventional. Hmm. Glory to God. God told Abram at the time, he said, leave your family. He said, leave your country. He said, leave your culture. Leave your inheritance. Leave all of it. I have something better for you. And for some of you, if not all of you, have to hear that. He went he didn't know where he was going. He didn't know. What I believe that God is asking, because uh, he wants you, I believe with all my heart, God has, has been preparing this house for such a time as this. And he wants you to experience what he is releasing. And so if there are things... I believe that, that God is saying, leave. Leave those things. You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're headed with him, but he'll show you. He's going to show you, and things are going to look very different. Services are going to look very different. Our new building is going to look very different. Why? Because God has need of it. He has need of you. But as soon as you begin to limit him, each and every time that God had left the children of Israel, in essence, was because they tried to limit God and they wanted to be able to do things the way that they thought things should be done. And it created a legalism within them. It created a, a, a basis on, on no relationship. I am so excited. And I don't know one bit of what it's going to look like. <laughs> Church, I love you. I love you with all my heart. And, and I want you to know that this house and this people are continually prayed for. Iniquity is continually bound up so that people would understand that they would not live according to iniquity, but they should rule over sin. They should rule over the nature that is dead and buried that Jesus took to the grave and has overcome so that you would be overcomers. You're going to see that message magnified in this new era. You will see a people that will truly live in holiness. And it won't just be hidden ones, hidden in caves or hidden churches, uh, just living holiness in small little corners. You will see the manifestation of the holiness of God in people out in the community, out in the workforce, out in the seven mountains that you're seeing. You will see the holiness of God manifest. As you are up here, worshiping and, and getting before the Lord, I heard the Lord speak a word to me, and he said, the vine that crawls over the wall. And I looked up the scripture that I could find, and it says, Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, vines know how to grab a hold of walls. And they grab on to every crevice of that wall and they begin to crawl. And when they reach the top, they go over the side of that, over the top of that wall. And then they begin to bear fruit. And the Lord is saying that there's some walls that's been standing before some of you that's in this house, and you said, Lord, how am I ever going to get 
over the wall. And the Lord said, because your vines and vines know how to crawl. The wall may be tall, but you know how to grab a hold and begin to get over it. Mm -hmm. The Lord says it's time to get over it. You've been standing at the base of the wall, and God said it's time to get over it. (laughs) It's time to begin to climb because it's in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, give the Lord a big hand. (laughs) Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before all of the gods of the world, I will sing praises to you, God. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know God is perfecting everything that concerns his people? And when we fully believe him and we walk in that, he makes us a fruitful vine. He makes us a fruitful vine. Hallelujah. We've got a couple of announcements. First of all, this coming Friday at 7 p.m. Where is it, M? There we are. This coming Friday at 7 o'clock and Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Equipping the Ecclesia, or you might say Ecclesia. (laughs) Ecclesia. God is equipping us. He's giving us everything that we have need of in order to accomplish his business, not not our business, according to accomplish his business in the earth. Because this is a day, it's about him. It's about his plans, his purposes. Amen? And then... A week from today, next Sunday, is Volunteer Sign-Up Day. Now, that's not a volunteer work day. It's a volunteer sign-up day. So uh, the sign-up sheets will be out there in the the, uh, coffee room, and there will be those leaders that are there for you to talk to and um, for you to to give your volunteer, give your elbows to. Amen? Um, the young adults are going to be meeting on July 17th uh, out in Holly at the Hall's home. And uh, you can see Amelia for the information about that. All the young ad- adults, there will be no watch and pray tonight because it is um, 4th of July. The Radiant Women are having a, another pop-up event on Saturday, July 24th. From 10 a.m. until noon, there's, it's, it's a coffee and fellowship, and there's going to be some testimonies. And when Gussie con- contacted me about that, she said that what the Lord spoke to her is, there is glory in your story. There is glory in your story. So next, next week, there will be a sign-up sheet uh, out in the coffee room for that. And I believe that's all. Are you ready to give to the Lord? You can never pay God back for these kind of times in his presence. It's not even about that. It's not even about paying him back. It's about giving unto him a portion of that that he's given unto us. Amen. We thank you, Father, for this day, your blessings and your favor. And, Lord, we set ourselves to give into the work of the ministry. 
And Father, I pray a blessing upon your people now as they give faithfully. God, this is a faithful people. Look upon the faithfulness of this people, Father, because they are a faithful body. And I thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness. The faithfulness that they walk in, Lord, is the faithfulness that has come out of you. Your faithfulness is to all generations. And so, Father, bless your people as we give this morning in the name of Jesus. And the ushers are going to serve the house, and we have a video for those of you that like to give online. Have you been wondering how you can give to New Wine? You've asked how, and we have some answers for you. So, here we go. First, you can text to give at 1-888-364-4483. Type give the number 2 NWM and you're on your way. You can also give through the church app. If you have it downloaded, go to the home page and select the icon that says give. You can also visit our website, newwineministries.net forward slash online dash giving. We want to thank you for your supporting New Wine Ministries and the mission to see God's kingdom flourish in our communities, nation, and really everywhere. Is he really going to teach? <laughs> yes. I am. Let's jump right to it. God is good, church. Um, You know, there's always this thing on the inside of me that says, okay, Lord, what do you want to do now? And uh, um. I was saying earlier, I believe with all my heart that God is preparing this house. God is preparing a people. And what God is doing in the people, um, uh, those that are listening online, of course, as well, and, uh, and God is preparing us for this new era. Um, if you have your bags packed and, and are waiting for the return of the Lord, um, you may want to unpack. We have some, some things to do here in the earth. Uh, in this region, we have some things to do. Amen? Amen. I believe wholeheartedly that God is going to manifest himself in such greater ways within the church. And uh, last week, I opened up a, a message on kingdom stewardship. And I can't begin to stress how important something like this is, because um, who's going to steward in the next era? Who's going to manage in the next era? This, this era right here that we have literally stepped into, who are going to be the people that God is going to actually release other things to? Well, it will be those that have managed and have learned to manage the things that God has placed into their hands. Amen? And so, happy Independence Day. You'll, you'll get to that barbecue soon enough. Okay? You'll get to that barbecue soon enough. So I want to just briefly pick up where we left off last week. If you didn't hear it last week, last Sunday, please uh, go to uh, our either webpage or Facebook and listen to the message from last week. I believe that these are times of preparation that God is releasing. Some of the things that you may be hearing may be things that you have heard before, but God is continuing uh, to, uh, to mature certain teachings that I believe that is specific to this new era that we're walking in. Amen. Okay, we have been talking about kingdom stewardship. I want to pick up where I left off, and uh, where we left off was the love of money. And uh, just want to talk about that for just a moment, because I think that we're going to see what kind of barometer uh, God actually uh, uh, looks at to see um, what will be your management and what will, how, how faithful your stewardship is in the earth. And so the love of money, of course, we were talking about last week, 1 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. How many of you know, as we were talking about last week, that there is an appetite for wealth? There's an appetite 
It doesn't even have to be for, for rich, like being rich, but there's an appetite for money. There's an appetite for a particular lifestyle. Amen? And if we don't or we're not uh, making enough for that particular lifestyle or to remain in that lifestyle, people will go to extreme uh, extremes to live in that lifestyle and continue to live in it. Amen? And uh, very easily get caught up in the appetite of money or the appetite of wealth. Let's continue. The word says that you cannot serve two masters, uh, Luke chapter 16. So let's go ahead and go to Luke chapter 16. I want to bring up this portion of scripture. So we're going to read verses 1 through 13 in the New King James Version. And then I'm going to read 1 through 13 one more time in the Passion Translation. Okay? I believe that a uh, portion of this scripture here has, has kind of uh, confused some people at times. But I want you to see how prevalent this is to where we're at as a body of Christ and, and your stewardship in the earth right now. Okay? Here we go. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward. And an occasion was brought, an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. Now, don't forget, this is a parable. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you have no longer, uh, you shall no longer be a steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, that they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to him, said to the first, how much does your master owe? How much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and go sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. And then he goes on to say, For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. So he was making a comparison there. Verse 9, And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Another translation says that when it fails they may receive you into ev your, an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Verse 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for he either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Passion Translation is going to kind of break that open a little bit more. So just stay with me. Let me go ahead and let me read this, and we'll touch on this as we go forward. But listen to the tr Passion Translation. Jesus taught his disciples using this story. There was once a very rich man who hired a manager to run his business and oversee all his wealth. But soon a rumor spread that the manager was wasting the master's money. So the master called him in and said, Is it true that you are mismanaging my estate? You need to provide me with a complete audit of everything you oversee for me. I've decided to dismiss you. The manager thought, now, what am I going to do? I'm finished here. I can't hide what I've done, and I'm too proud to beg to get my job back. I've had an idea that will secure my future. It will win me favor and secure friends who will take care of me and help me when I get fired. So the dishonest manager hatched his scheme. He went to everyone who owed his master money, one by one, and asked them, how much do you owe my master? One debtor owed $20,000, so he said to him, Let me see your bill. Pay me now, and we'll settle for 20% less. 
The clever manager scratched out the original amount owed and reduced it by 20%. And to another who owed $200,000, he said, pay me now and we'll reduce your bill by 50%. Wouldn't that be a deal? And the clever uh, manager scratched out the original amount owed and reduced it by half. Even though his master was defrauded when he found out about the shrewd way his, this manager had feathered his own nest, he congratulated the clever scoundrel for what he had done to lay up for his future needs. Hmm. Jesus continued, Remember this, the sons of darkness are more shrewd than the sons of light in their interactions with others. It is important that you use wealth of this world to demonstrate your friendship with God by winning friends and blessing others. Then when this world fails and falls apart, your generosity will provide you with an eternal reward. Verse 10, then the one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibilities. But those who cheat with the little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal treasures of the spiritual world? And if you have not been proven faithful with what belongs to another, why should you be given wealth of your own? It is impossible for a person to serve two masters at the same time. You will be forced to love one and reject the other. One master will be despised, and the other will have your loyal devotion. It is no different with God and the wealth of this world. You must enthusiastically love one and def definitely reject the other. Now, let me give you this. In this parable, we have a glimpse into the person of the Father. At first, we may think, Father, how is it that you would commend fraudulent activity and side with the one that's doing wrong? But look a little closer to this verse. Even though his master was defrauded, verse 8, even though his master was defrauded when he found out about the shrewd way this manager had feathered his own nest. Now, I want you to pay attention to those words for just a moment, the way that the Passion Translation says it. That the manager had feathered his own nest. He congratulated the clever scoundrel for what he had done to lay up for his future needs. Think about that. So remember, this is a parable, and I want to I give you this remembrance, okay? A parable in its simplest form is an earthly occurrence that gives us a heavenly perspective. He was wanting us to see this. So in this case, it gives us a look into the Father's kingdom economic structure. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, those of you that are listening online or those of you that are listening here, um, let, me, let me give the full understanding of this. I'm going to say some pieces, and you could easily think, oh, no, <laughs> Is he, really, is he really thinking that way? Just hear me out. There is a feathering of your own nest in the earth and in heaven, so to speak. Verse 9 highlights how your communion with the Father and your appreciation of His salvation and healing of your soul causes you to give extravagantly to others. Now, listen to verse 9. It is important that you use the wealth of this world to demonstrate your friendship with God by winning friends and blessing others. Then when this world fails and falls apart, your generosity will provide you with an eternal reward. Now, let me give you this. I'm just giving you some words that the Lord was speaking to me as I was just putting this together. Not only do you open the doors of opportunity in winning friends, but also you also open a door to speak into their lives. Now, I want you to see this. I want you to understand that you may already say, well, I give my tithe and I give an offering. 
and what this is talking about is not just giving your tithe and just giving off offering, but it literally, it, it, it asks you to bring even all the rest before the Father and say, Father, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with all of this? And you will see that, of course, the normal things happen. Of course, you pay your bills, you take care of things you save and all these different kinds of things. But there is a management that goes beyond even just paying tithe. There is a management of wealth. There is a management of what's in your hands. Amen? And so what's interesting to me is that, is that God uses this example to show us uh, how that we could actually, that, that we don't think about what it's going to be like in heaven. We just want to get to heaven. Or we don't think about, in essence, what we can do here right now to actually, uh, uh, can I say it? Feather our own nest here right now. Now, let me continue with that thought for just a moment. Stay with me. Also, there is an eternal reward that reaps benefits in what we receive and manage in eternity. Jesus thought, his thought was, that the children of darkness are more shrewd than the children of light because the children of darkness will pay attention to their future needs or future rewards than the children of light. That's, that's the thought right there. He's saying that the children of darkness pay attention to what they will need and they actually will use it to their benefit for their future. And so they, they feed into that, just like this unjust steward was somebody that he was giving uh, or releasing others with their bill and with his management. And, and uh, out of all the things there that the Lord says, of course, this one really sticks out to me the most, is that the children of darkness are more shrewd than the children of light. Now, this implies, listen to this, this implies that there are rewards in the earth and in heaven that are received subject to how you have managed or stewarded money. No tomatoes? Okay. I'm going to read that again. This implies that there are rewards in the earth and in heaven that are received subject to how you have managed or stewarded money in the earth. Not according to earthly economic structures, but according to the kingdom economic ver or values. Does that make sense? There is, there is a paying attention to your future in the earth. Now, I, I, I'm not talking about setting money aside for your retirement. That's not what I'm talking about. There is a paying attention to your future in the earth and in heaven paying attention to, to what the future is in heaven, paying attention to what the future is in the earth in regard to what you are receiving spiritually and naturally. Now it says this, there is a paying attention to your future in the earth and in heaven that you should be shrewd in. The word shrewd there is implying a, it's a cautious character, good judgment, quick decisions, and intelligence. So God is, is saying that there was a shrewdness of the children of darkness uh, that the children of light have to pay attention to. Now, let me say it like this. There are times that within our limitations of what we have had uh, naturally, that especially during this time that we live in, that we, we want to restrain and hold things back for ourselves. Okay? And there is a, there is a tendency to, to hold on to more, hold on to more, hold on to more, and to not pay attention that, wait a minute, God's economic structure is totally different than the earthly economic structure. It's totally different. Totally different. And so the, the interesting thing about this unjust steward was that God was commending him on, on him thinking about what his future is going to be like in heaven and the things that he would manage in heaven. Because once again, it was a parable, earthly circumstances to highlight a heavenly perspective. Okay? Let me read a little bit more. In essence, the Lord was saying the children of light lack. They lack this. They lack paying attention to their future according to the kingdom economy, earthly and heavenly. 
They lack how generosity plants seed for the future, earthly and heavenly. Children of light lack understanding on how proper management is rewarded with eternal gifts, even eternal gifts that are given and used in the earth. I'm giving you a message on, on stewardship and management. And I've heard a lot of messages on tithing, offerings, and, and these different attributes about giving. And it, it's one thing to understand generosity, um, but then there's a generosity on your terms. There's a generosity that's, that's based on your terms on how you want to give and when you want to give it. Even setting things aside because of how you decided you would do it. And sometimes it's based on uh, the ignorance of how you see the word or choosing to see the word according to what fits your bias. Does that make sense? Okay, that, that I've already, th I think it's already like this, and plus I really want to hold on to this part, and so uh, tithing is not for the New Testament. I'm just telling you the reality of how people think, okay? And so based on that ignorance, it sides with your bias, and so that's what you just continue to walk in, okay? And what this portion of... of this parable is saying is that even what you have and how you, you manage it in the earth, your wealth, your, the finances, whatever it is that you have, begins to determine, listen to me, you got to hear this, begins to determine what you will manage after your time here on the earth. Hold on. Verse 10. Through 12, we're going to wrap this up. The one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibilities. But those who cheat with the little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. Am I talking about salvation at all right now? I'm not. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm not talking about just making it into heaven is what I'm telling you is that literally there's more beyond making it to heaven. What I'm telling you is that there's literally more to right now that you're living in of, of spiritual gifts that God actually wants you to have that what this is saying has a lot to do with how you manage wealth here now. Now, that's not my interpretation. That's what it says. Verse 11 if you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal treasures of the spiritual world or the spiritual dimension? Like I could just read that and just, I'm done. Drop the mic kind of thing. Just leave. You would get it. Okay? Because it's, it's really that simple. And, and he was commending the shrewd steward because sometimes we don't think, well, what we have financially, it really doesn't matter. I mean, we're living good. Uh, I'm paying my tithe, uh, you know, so on and so on. But no, he's saying, you're not thinking about your future in heaven. You're not thinking about what your and what's going to be managed even during the millennial reign. Now, think about that. Because the majority of what we think after we leave this earth is that we'll be up there like Fred. We'll be able to play like Fred. Okay, up there on our cloud. Think about this. I'm just going to give you this little thought, and you can take this home and munch on it over the weekend, the rest of the weekend. Is that if there, not if, I know that there's going to be, but if there's going to be a millennial reign in the earth for a thousand years, who's going to help manage that? I could be done right there, right? I could be done right there. 
It's, it's, it's really, see, we, we don't think beyond. We think, I made it to heaven. Glory to God. Now I get to pet animals and, and, and just get to see rainbows all the time and, and, and that, that, all the things that I think heaven is. But what this is saying is that the things that you're managing here now, especially wealth, will determine what you will manage during the time of the millennial reign. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> Verse 11, If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal treasures of the spiritual world? And if you have not been proven faithful in what belongs to another, why should you be given wealth of your own? So here the Father, Jesus uses this natural circumstance in the earth to give this example of spiritual truths. God can trust us with true riches, spiritual, if we are found faithful in handling less important issues such as money. It's interesting because money has a beguiling power. It seems the more we get, the more we want. And Jesus is teaching us that our willingness to bring money under control is necessary for our spiritual development. When I start reading scriptures like this, I start, I start dropping everything. Just, just rearranging how I think rearranging how I do things, even begin to, to manage what money that I think I don't have and, and even begin to manage that differently. Why? We are either controlling money or it's controlling us. So, one's attitude toward money is... Indicative of one's submission to or rebellion against God's lordship. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's all his. It's all his. The wealth that you have, the, 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 the finances that you have, however little or however great, God is watching how that is being managed. Did I say anything about salvation? God is watching how that is managed here in the earth. And in the earth, even, even a portion of that uh, to receive uh, uh, spiritual blessings here in the earth. Now, I'm not saying you give money to receive a, a, a spiritual gift like that. No, that's not how that works. If that was the case, then Simon the sorcerer would be justified. But it is literally the management. When earthly mammon has a hold on you or there is an appetite for these things, then God is saying uh, you need to understand you, you have to release this thing because if you don't release it, it will continue to have a hold on you and I can't continue. You won't be able to flow in the things that I want to release through you because of your appetite for things in the earth. And it is literally how you manage those and how you steward those that will determine how much I'm just going to say it, will determine how much anointing you actually walk in. It's going to be, a, I'm going to catch flack for that. I really am. Not here necessarily, but I'll catch flack for it. But it's true because, think about it, it's not the, the giving of it, it's what it's holding on to. And if, if it's not surrendered, then th th that, means, that means that something has a hold of your heart. And as the Father sees that, that, that you're managing and you're giving away and you're doing these things, that, that he sees that these things have no hold on them. It's interesting because the enemy came against the Lord Jesus. He says, you have nothing in me. This is a, a part of you being able to say to the enemy, you have nothing in me. Does that make sense? 
It is interesting how earthly mammon or earthly wealth becomes a barometer as to how the Father would see our ability to handle and steward spiritual riches. I'm just going to say this again. When the thousand year millennial reign happens, there is going to be so much more to manage, so much more to steward. And God will position his people, those ones that have been faithful and what they have stewarded in the earth right now. So don't think that when you go to heaven, that you're done, you kick back the lazy boy, chill out, and expect Michael the archangel to bring you some grapes, <laughs> Snickers, those cracker goldfish, <laughs> Cheez-Its, <laughs> whatever it is, it just, there's so much more I want to jump into, but I just can't yet. Those who have managed well, he's going to position prior to his calling. Let's go ahead and let's stand, church. The portion of this parable is that why the unjust steward was commendable is because he looked forward to his needs. And what the Father is saying to the children of light is that by what you manage that you would think about forward, uh, think about these things that are ahead of you. Heaven is ahead of you, but heaven's literally not the destination. It's, it's not the end. There's so much more that's going to be happening when Christ returns. So much more. And how literally the things that we have managed here in the earth, God is going to see that. And those that he had given five talents to came back with five more talents. God is literally looking at the investment that has been deposited in your life. And when you leave this earth, when it is your time to leave this earth, he will look at what you have brought back. He will look at how you have managed that and how you have, in essence, brought a return to him. I know this sounds odd. It wasn't my parable. But he used that parable so that you could see the kingdom economic structure. Amen? All right. We'll talk more about this next week. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for what you're doing. And Father, we thank you for your word because, Father, your word is life. Your word is powerful. And Father, I ask that you would open up our hearts to understand revelation, Lord God, that, Father, that we would look beyond, Father, even what we have known and, Father, stretch forward because, Father, we want everything that you have for us. And, Father, we want to manage whatever you have put into our hands, whether it's a little or a lot. Father, we want to manage it well before you. And so, Father, we bless you. And, Father, I ask that you would bless your people as they go and enjoy themselves. Father, this, the rest of the weekend, Father, and enjoy themselves with family and friends. And, Father, enjoy their freedom that you have given this nation. So, Father, we bless you. And, Father, we thank you. And we all said... Amen and amen. Church, listen to me for just one moment. For those of you that maybe uh, would like to receive salvation, um, we're going to have some ministers up here at the altar. For some of you that maybe have not taken communion and have a need to take communion, we have that available up here after service as well. If you need prayer for healing, once again, up here at the altar as, uh, as you are dismissed. Amen. Church, we love you. You be blessed.